Okay, it's um, Nick from IPL Radio here. Um, Inspiring Passionate Lives is our uh, thing. We're a voluntary organisation uh, helping people uh, through, uh, well, basically a volunteer organisation helping all the people out there in the community. We're here for Community Week. Um, as I say, at uh, Lake Ants here, there's, oh, um, I guess, would be 15 or 20 stalls that you can um, find out information for about different groups, different volunteer groups. Uh, at the moment, we've got Audrey, and she's from the... Uh, Senior Centre. Senior Centre in, uh, where's that? In Mandra, Ornsby Ter- Terrace, Mandra. Ornsby Terrace, that'll be near the uh, Mandra Hotel Motel, or the motel, I think, is that right? No, it's quite close to the Performing Arts Centre. Oh, yes, oh, that's right. Yes, I'm thinking of Gibson Street, that's silly yeah. me, isn't it? <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, what do you do there, uh, Audrey? I volunteer volunteer on the receptionist desk so I just meet and greet people um, welcome them make sure they're having a great time and what sort of uh, things do you have going on at the you know like let's just say uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday so what sort of things would you have on <laughs> ok so we have um, lots of exercise classes uh, there's, a, there's Tai Chi there's just jazz there's, we've got yoga classes we do um, card games um, mahjong uh, um, arts and crafts so there's something going every day we also do meals five days a week uh, it, once you become a member, you come down and have a meal. A two-course meal is very reasonably priced, and they're lovely meals. And we get a lot of people there. Yes. So, uh, uh, on a day, how many meals do you think that you would do? Just approximately. Um, depending what it is, like on a Wednesday, um, there's usually a roast, so they can do up to say, oh, I don't know, 40, 50 meals, and sometimes takeaway meals. So yes, um, we, we get a good crowd there. Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, that's really good. And, and you obviously, like you're saying, you have a lot of classes from yoga to cards. And I hope, I hope there's no gambling involved. Oh, no, that's something. Oh, we do bingo on a Thursday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> You'd know all the, um, all the bingo calls. Like, um, was it, is it Two Fat Ladies or Two Fat Ducks 22? Two Fat Ducks, two, uh, the, what, Legs 11. Yes. Uh, yeah, two pack duck, ducks is 22, but I think they do more modern calls now, which I'm not aware of, okay? So, I don't, oh, cause I don't do bingo, sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're, I'm, I'm one with you there, you know. <laughs> Probably because I can't count all that well. Well, maybe so, <laughs> maybe so. You don't need to do a lot of counting and bingo, though. You know? <laughs> no, you don't, do. it's just marking off. So, um, how do people, uh, they become a member, do they? Yes, they do. They, we do a yearly member from January to December. Um, at the present time, it's $54 for a year for a member. Um, and that inc- you can go, come in and do anything you like at the centre. If you want to do like exercise classes, some of them cost you a little bit more because we get proper teachers to come in and, and do them all. Yes. But uh, other things like cards, uh, etc. That's all free. Your mahjong's free. Uh, your arts and crafts, you bring your own um, gear, so you just come in and enjoy yourself, yes. And uh, do you have, um, uh, we were chatting on the way uh, to this interview, um, do you find a lot of seniors uh, don't know what they're entitled to out there? Yeah, I think a lot of the older ones are a bit confused because a lot of them aren't ta- tech sa- savvy and everything you need to know now seems to be online and so I think it's yeah, a bit hard for some of them. Yes, I do. Yeah. There's a, uh, we were just speaking to uh, probably about half an hour ago, a youth star, which were uh, just across the way from us, um, Audrey, and, and uh, they actually help people, um, and they did say the more mature people, with um, their technical problems. So if anybody's in the area um, from your organisation, it's not too far to move up here, or move up here, get up here, um, they could help them, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure they could. Yes, I mean, I live in a village across the road here, and we get... And in our newsletter, we were, we are told about these organisations that we can come and see them. And but the Baptist School across the road there too, um, they've got a program where, you know, we, we could get people to come in and show us a bit about, you know, how to use the computer and what have you. Yeah. Well, that's great, really, isn't it? Because, um, you know, the, it's your old cliche. If you don't know where to go, 
you don't know where to go, do you, with these things? Exactly right. Yes, and I think all these organisations we have here today, they all help people finding out exactly what's on around the place. And because some of these places I haven't heard about either till today. So yeah. Well, I knew to the, uh, and it's a great idea. Just up there, uh, we walk past his poops, which is um, people uh, walking, uh, uh, particularly mature age people. They they walk their dogs for them, and uh, I mean that's a great idea as well. Oh yes, um, I, there's a few people I know have used that, especially if you've had like a, a knee reconstruction or hip reconstruction. They can come and just take your dogs out for a walk, and I think it's just absolutely wonderful. Well, I'm lazy, so I might get them across to my place. What do you think? Oh, well, maybe I could walk your dog because I walk mine. <laughs> okay, so people just, I think you've said you're in Ormsby. Is that the best way to contact you? Are there telephone numbers or uh, do you have an email address at all? It's better for you to come into the centre and then because we, we give you a free tour so you can see what, it, what everybody's doing. And most people that do come in and have a look, they just sign up because they can, they can see that there'd be something there for everybody. Yes. And really, that's where it's a dollar a week when you work it out. Um, I mean, uh, for all that sort of fun and enjoyment and social activity, it's not bad at all. No, it's for sure. I mean, what is a dollar a week? You can't buy anything for a dollar a week, can you? You can't even get a dollar for a dollar. <laughs> that's sure. Yeah. So I hope everybody will come and come and see us. Come down and meet new people and have yeah, enjoy the activities and everything. Thank you. Okay, that's Audrey from um, Mandra Seniors, um, here in Ormsbury Terrace, uh, Mandra. So, look, pop in and see them. As she said, it's very, very minimally priced and you, you go to a great deal. So thanks very much, Audrey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, I'm River with IPL Radio and I'm here with a guest and your name is? Chris Harwood. All right, and who are you with exactly? Uh, Friends of Mandra Performing Arts Centre. And what do you do with um, your corporation? Well, I'm a volunteer. Every month we have a concert and I sell the raffle tickets and sometimes tea and coffee. There's also opportunities to become an usher for the shows. We have a lot of tribute acts that come through the week. Plus, um, we also at times have the real artist. It's a fabulous opportunity for people to become social, um, do something constructive, and have a great time. Nice, so um, some of the tribute bands and local bands of Mandurah, is this what your your yes. um, people do? We have tribute bands um, in the future uh, for Simon and Garfunkel, Roy Orbison, Cliff Rob Richards, and Bee Gees. I love Roy Orbison. Pink Floyd as well, nice. Nice, and that that um, and they're all the um, they're all cover bands, correct? All sorry. Are they all cover bands? Yes. Right, and um, you mentioned as well you've had some of the real artists come in as well. Do you remember any particular ones? Tony Charles is coming not this Saturday but the next Saturday. I lo I love I love yeah. She is yeah. Um, and so you do these month to month? No, th every week we have up to six or seven shows. And we're, as I was saying, we're always looking for volunteers because we need ushers for the shows. Wow, and that's uh, every week you have about seven shows. Oh, so that's, that's quite a lot, all in the local area around here? Well, they're all at the Performing Arts Centre. I see. So if you, if you want to catch some of these shows, you have to go to the Performing Arts Centre. Is that right? Um, and so you yourself, you're a volunteer and you help with the raffle tickets. Um, is that raffle... Um, every time you have a show, you have a raffle, is that No, no, only when we have our morning melodies or morning concerts. Um, come along, you pay $25, you receive a wonderful morning tea, tea and coffee, and you watch a show for an hour. It's absolutely fantastic. Nice. Um, is there anything else you want to mention about your organisation? Yes. If you are interested in joining our organisation, please do phone the Mandra Art Centre and we'll put you on to the person who will talk to you about what is available. Thank you. All right. And um, just before you go, do we want to have a look at um, that pamphlet again um, about the one that's this week? Right. This Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock, we have morning, the morning concert and we have a band, actually opera singers singing, 
plus morning tea, and you get to purchase some wonderful raffle tickets for fabulous prizes. All right. Well, I'll definitely keep an eye on it. That sounds very exciting. And especially you mentioned the um, Roy Orbison and the Bee Gees, a cover band for both of those. So that will be exciting. Um, So yeah, I think we'll go back to some music. It's been great to have you. Um, But yeah, so keep tuned in for some more interviews, everyone. Good afternoon and uh, welcome back after a little uh, lunch sojourn. I had, yeah, so you, and I like that word. Um, we're from IPL Radio, my name's Nick, and we're here uh, during Volunteer Week, uh, catching up with the many different um, volunteer groups here. Um, there's volunteer groups, and there's also people who are attached to volunteer groups, and I've got Mari here from Wayfarers to tell us just a little bit about what they do. Oh, thank you. Um, Mandurah Wayfarers is a group that's all about connecting older people with their community. So we work one-on-one with people um, who are disconnected from their community and we reconnect them by finding out what their skills and talents are and looking at volunteering groups and organisations who need help and putting them in touch with one another. Um, We're funded by the Department of Communities and we're a joint project with Inclusion Solutions and the City of Mandurah. So, how do people, how would people know that, the, and by the way, what does Wayfarers, how does that name come about? It comes about through travellers and people who are disconnected. Um, and the idea was founded through a former CEO of Inclusion Solutions who had people who did lose their way once they were retired. Uh, because a lot of our ego, a lot of our self-worth is centred around being employed and working. So it was a way of connecting with people and saying, what are your passions, what are you missing, and let's try and help you get those skills back again. So, um, so my, uh, but I know you may find this hard to but I am over 50, yeah. <laughs> but um, so if somebody like myself, how would I know that uh, the Wayfarers organisation exists? How, how, how does that get out there? Yeah, that's a good question because we do a lot of promotions, we come to events like this um, and interestingly, you might find this interesting, is that a lot of our connections are through Facebook. Um, we have a Facebook community and that's where we get a lot of our information out. Uh, the City of Mandurah promotes us through libraries and on their website. So. It's, it's a matter of getting out and if we meet people, they say, oh gosh, my, my dad needs help. You know, he sits at home, he doesn't have the same sort of sense of purpose that he did before. And that's how it works and how we get people connected with us. And how did you start out uh, doing this, Murray? Oh gosh, I've had a long career and history in volunteering and also through local government. And I just saw this opportunity to help people connect back with their community. So um, the rewards from your job would be? Huh. Meeting people and just seeing them, they're, they're being revitalised through having another sense of purpose and finding like-minded people. So I'm just sort of trying to, um, without trying to pigeonhole, but I'm just trying to think, do you find um, that maybe there's a... Uh, a gentleman or a woman that is retired without their partner, do they come to you more than a married couple who are still together or or not really? Bit of both. Um, We've got married couples and we've also got single men and single women. Um, The the project runs in both the city of Mandurah and the city of Kalamunda because they're the two um, shires or the two local government areas with the highest proportion of retired people. And that's why Mandurah was chosen for the project. Yeah, it's fascinating. Well, again, um, being, well, not new, that's not, I've been in this area, around this area for a while. I would have thought that Mandurah, yes, I know they have an ageing population, but I thought with the district around there and how it's thriving, that um, it might have been a, a younger demographic. I think it's a bit of both, but it has got the highest proportion of aged um, people along along with Kalamunda. They're the two um, local government areas with the highest proportion of retired people. It's uh, 
Yeah, it's quite amazing. I, I would never would never have realised that. So, would you is your uh, the organisation way for us? It's a large organisation. Do you find it varies um, because people come and go because ones and and our role is not to to keep them because our role is to reconnect them back with their community and to give them some meaningful things to do so that then they become really active members of the community as well. So they would maybe perhaps, if they come and see you and you recommend, oh, by the way, I think you might be interested in X, Y, Z, that's where you you point them? Exactly, and and we do joint things with a lot of volunteer groups. For example, uh, next month we're got the Mandurah Wildlife Carers coming along as guest speakers at our Falcon Cafe Connect and in Lakelands we're connecting with a group called Youngster.co who are young people who come and help seniors with technology. So we just try and look at interesting things that might attract people to come and chat to us and then it develops from there. Have you found that um, in your role, how long have you been in role by the way Mari? I've only been in the role for six months. Okay. Have you found in your in your role, like I, I haven't been at IPL or that long either, there's an amazing amount of voluntary organisations that we don't know about? Uh, there's an awful lot of um, volunteer organisations. I mean, I've volunteered all my life and um, I think probably I do a lot of it for my own purposes. Like with St John's Ambulance and Fremantle Sea Rescue, I do it to drive fast cars and fast boats. But... Um, there are a lot of groups that people don't know about and this is another reason why Wayfarers was set up because of the decline in volunteerism in our community. Um, People don't have children now until they're in their 40s so they can't commit as much to the community as perhaps the older generations did. I find uh, 100% correct what you say and I was speaking to um, a lady before and I think one of the misconceptions is that, you know, volunteers, you're not on call 24-7. You don't have to do 40 hours a week. You don't have to do 10 hours a week. If you've got a couple of hours spare, we can fit in with you. Uh, do you find that uh, as well? Oh, totally. And I actually think that the people who volunteer get a heck of a lot more out of it than the groups and the organisations. And I was speaking to some people around here today and it becomes a way of life. Have a cup of tea with the people that you volunteer with and um, you generate those connections in the so- in society. That's brilliant. Um, so again, if, we, uh, if there's people out there who want to, to get in touch with your organisation, is the best way through your Facebook page? That's the best way. Um, the best way is Mandurah Wayfarers Online Community. That's our Facebook page. Or we've got heaps of brochures around um, through the City of Mandurah's website or directly contacting us through email or by phone. Well, that's great, Marie, and thank you very much for uh, spending a little bit of time with us and spending, tell us about your organisation. Um, hopefully it's helped some people out there because I think, like everything here, you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Good afternoon. We're back at IPL and live um, at uh, Lakeland Shopping Centre and we have Sarah here. Hi, Sarah. Hi, how are you going? Good, thank you. Can you tell us a bit about your organisation for the volunteer service week that we've got? Absolutely. So we're from the Mandurah Marsupials and Wildlife Centre and we are actually located in Coodenup. We've been operating for over 55 years and our main goal and passion is to look after our local wildlife. So we operate on a 24 hour, seven days a week and we are fully run by um, volunteers and people that would like to donate out of the kindness of their heart. So how do we get in contact if we want to do something like that, if we want to volunteer for your... Wonderful. So we've got a Facebook page you can go on to and message us or just give us a call. We are open 24-7 we'd love to have some volunteers on board um, and people that are actually passionate about the wildlife. So we are an organisation that are passionate, hello, this is Blackie, um, about rehabilitation. So we're all about rehabilitating the wildlife to release it back into the wild. It's it's really important to do that because, I mean, if we didn't have the wildlife, we wouldn't have the seeds and everything that go with it. Yeah, and everything's a bit like anything in life. It's a ripple effect. So in one area, if one area is lacking, it's going to ricochet through across. And I think with the young generation coming through, it's so especially 
especially important for them to engage with our local wildlife because it's up to them to, you know, conservation it moving forward. Um, yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. And things are endangered as well as, yeah, as well as um, with the new buildings happening and everything else, that's where wildlife get damaged. Absolutely, especially like with, with Blackie here as a red-tailed cockatoo, I mean, they, we are absolutely annihilating their, their habitats, um, especially with mining and everything like that. We're all, we all need it to roll around, but we need to be smart about it and we can have our cake and eat it too, but we need the right people in place to make sure that they are looked after. So it... Before profit. So, um, once again, your uh, Facebook page and people can contact you that way. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Facebook page, we're on, we've got a website, you give us a call, we operate 24 hours a day. Um, we just need like minded people to come on board, or donations are always welcome. Absolutely. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you, Blackie. Oh, now he's quiet. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good afternoon and once again welcome to uh, uh, IPL, Inspiring Passionate Lives. Uh, we're here live at the uh, Lakeland Shopping Centre. We're going around um, the different volunteer booths here and uh, chatting to people and finding out what their, uh, what their group's all about. Um, which uh, I've learnt uh, a heck of a lot today about what goes on. Um, at the moment we've got um, Teresa from Barking Dogs Rescue and she's going to tell us um, what her organisation is all about. Thanks Teresa. Thank you and thank you for having us here today and welcome to all the volunteers and thank you to all the volunteers who spend their time doing things. I'm part of the Bark Dog Rescue uh, we hold stalls from Rockingham to Mandurah. Uh, we're very much a part of the community. I live in Peel, so I'm called a Peel Barker. Um, I often go into IPL. They are very generous with their time for Bark. And we do interviews on the Jess address. And we've also done other interviews with other interviewers. I'm gradually working my way around all of you. <laughs> what do we do in Bark? Well, we rescue, we take surrender dogs, we look after them, we foster them, then we train them and check all their health needs out, and then we rehome them. At the moment, we've got about 15 dogs that are ready to go, including five beautiful, lovely puppies. Black and white puppies, they're absolutely gorgeous. They're seven weeks old. In about another eight to 10 days, they will be ready for their forever homes. We also have lots of other dogs, so I invite you all to please go to the Bark website, follow it weekly, and have a look what dogs we have available for adoption. Maybe you're not ready to adopt. Maybe you would like to foster. Fostering is free. We provide the food, the leads, everything you need the beds the blankets the coats and we look after the training if you need any help so we have lots of ways you can help you can volunteer with bark by coming along to our market stores we also have a high tea in october the bark annual high tea uh, that's booked for october the 29th at peel manor peel manor is one of our major sponsors IPL is another major sponsor by giving us an awful lot of airtime, and uh, we thank them both for that. So we're a very active organisation, and um, I'm always welcome and willing to talk to anybody. Well, uh, thanks for that. Uh, I've got a couple of questions, if I may. You may. Um, I've noticed uh, in my walks around the block, which is rare. <laughs> Um, you haven't met me then. <laughs> <laughs> so I've noticed that, uh, and I, I, I'm assuming they're not in competition to you, but uh, I notice a lot of people who have retired greyhounds, um, it, does that sort of work in with you? It does. Um, we're part of a village. There's, every rescue is part of the village. We have canine, there's greyhounds, there's heart, there's Desperate for Love, and that's only a few, and Bark. Well, I look at us as a village with a different coloured house. So we all help ourselves. We've had dogs come up from Bunbury. We had a deaf dog, 
and we knew K9 had a deaf trainer and they took our dog. I've taken a dog from K9 when they didn't have a foster and we had a, fa a spare foster home. So we're all part of the same village, we're not in competition. In fact, up at some of the markets, I'm next door to the Greyhound people. And I was exactly opposite the Greyhounds at the Lark Hill Vets Christmas Fair. I was uh, to one side of the Perth Chihuahua Rescue and uh, there was bark, there was lots of rescues. We're all part of a family, I call us a village with a different coloured house. Well, that, that's brilliant really because, um, uh, you know, I just, I know that people go out and buy a cavoodle or a spoodle or uh, a French bulldog and the price is there for something like that. Uh, I think they're around $4,000 and upwards and really, uh, I, <laughs> You know, we can go to somewhere like you uh, and get a, a puppy, which obviously I know there'll be some cost involved, but to me it seems a very, very logical thing to do. Yes, our costs are much lower. The thing is, if you want a dog from a breeder, you do not get the full vaccination, you do not get any dental work, you do not get the sterilisation, you will get a microchip, one hopes. From a rescue, they are all vaccinated, microchipped, desexed, and they've all had their vet work done. Now, sometimes I know, <coughs> excuse me, some of the fosters I've had have gone to the vet, and the vet bills are $2,000, but we only charge five or 600. That's what we fundraise for. That's, um, look, I say, it's a great, uh, a great a great thing that you're doing. Do you find that um, there's any particular size of dog? Um, I'm assuming, again assuming, that the older dogs are a little bit harder to, to place. Is that fair to say? Not so much the old ones. The really old ones, like 10, 11, 12, there's always people who want those, and I'm one of those. Um, I've got three geriatrics, and I mean geriatrics. They match the house. But the middle age, puppies go very quickly. It's the five, six, seven year olds who are not socialized, have been left outside, are not used to walking on a lead. We get dogs in six, seven, eight years old who are not sterilized. So you, then they have health issues, both male and female. So we get them sterilized, we get them vaccinated, microchip, the whole works. But it sounds like, uh, again, a very, very good thing and, and you're, again, uh, an organisation that depends upon volunteers and uh, donations. Um, it's a tough gig to do that sort of thing, isn't it? So, oh, sorry, I, I'll just can follow that with... Um, yeah. So, why did you get involved um, and what, what are your rewards? Well, goodness me. You're asking me for memories here. <laughs> I've been involved with dog rescues for a long time. Uh, when I lived in Perth, I was involved with one there. And then when I came down to Singleton, I um, had a house there, but I moved into that. And a very, very dear friend called Sally from Bark, who's one of the top dogs in Bunbury, said to me, you've got too much time on your hands, come back and come to us. And I said to her, well, we'll see how we go. And um, I knew Peel Manor, and they backed me in for the high tea, and that was the start of it. And then I got in with um, the markets, Street Hustle, who are absolutely wonderful in supporting Bark Dog Rescue. And then, of course, through Street Hustle, I've met IPL, who back us in too and support us. So we've got a lot of supporters here. What do I get out of it? I get out of it seeing the numbers every week on the newsletter which comes out, log on to our page, tick newsletter and you'll get an email newsletter. We're up to about 608 dogs rescued since um, Bark started three or four years ago and uh, that's the buzz. The buzz is picking them up, knowing we're not judgmental for whatever reason you want to surrender. We do not judge, we do not ask. All we ask is tell us the truth about their history and their health needs and 
seeing them go off to their forever home is wonderful. I'm lucky, I'm a foster mum who can let them go without any tears. I've had a lot of dogs through my house and probably only one or two who I really have broke my heart. Um, uh, just one final question, if I may. Um, you said that uh, a lot of people are unsure, so they may foster a dog. Um, what happens if they're fostering a dog and they actually fall for the dog? Have you had many people go, oh, actually, I want to adopt it? Does that happen? Well, I'm the classic. I've got three failed fosters. <laughs> In fact, I've had three others that have been old and passed away. So I'm the classic failed foster mum. Yes, it happens, and it happens quite often. But some people, we say foster with a view to adopt. So if you're not sure whether you want a big dog or what sort of dog, we say foster one of ours, what you think you might like. We try to match it with your home, your children, your walking, your activities. And often that will fail because we've matched correctly. If it doesn't match, the dog goes to another home and you can try again. Well, it's a brilliant organisation and thank you very much for your time and explaining about it. Again, um, it's a bonus to everybody because we get to learn about something in a community which people can get involved upon, whether in volunteering or whether in fact uh, fostering a dog, rather than going paying a lot of money sometimes and then not wanting the dog. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you everybody and thanks IPL.